All right, here's a little bit of material on uh, the concept of convolution. Now, we've done uh, a bit already in, in code, and so we'll start by reviewing that, and then we'll talk a little bit more toward what was happening in homework two. So we have, we have a, a, a signal that is some, some length. So this might be x0 here, let's blow this up, x1, x2, x3, uh, x4, etc. Out to, if we have n items total, then the last one is xn minus 1. And uh, what, what we said when we were trying to estimate our derivative, uh, so this is uh, in, in this case, this might be uh, the x, x coordinate of the left wrist. Uh, so the horizontal dimension here is, is time. And what we said was we could est make this estimate of uh, uh, velocity, which is uh, dx dt. We could estimate this as uh, x of uh, t plus 1 minus x of t over uh, delta t. And this is dx dt uh, or, or uh, xt dot at, at time t. So we're estimating uh, the velocity uh, by this, this finite difference here. So, so this very first element here, let me copy these so I can work with them down below. So this, this very first uh, element here, if now I, I want to uh, line up a, another time series here and call that x dot, then, then what we said was that this first p this element right here x dot of 0 is going to be derived from uh, these two elements here x x1 uh, and x0 so so let's blow that up just a little bit so this is x1 minus x0 over delta t and again that's an approximation this element here uh, becomes x2 minus x1 over uh, delta t, and this one here is x3 minus x2 over delta t. So, so hopefully it's clear what the pattern is. So I, I have the, so, so the, the, the pattern hopefully that you're seeing is that uh, this element here, we're in some sense, you can think of this as we're multiplying by 1. And this element here, we're multiplying by negative 1. And, uh, and that's how we're computing our estimate of the velocity at time 0. Now, likewise, when we, get to, when we shift over uh, to this next element, I can imagine quite literally taking these pieces here. Oops, I got too many there. Hold on. Can, can literally ma imagine taking uh, these two lines and shifting them over in, in this way. So now what this says is I have, let's do a slightly, let's do a different color here. Um, I, I'm multiplying x2 by 1 and x1 by negative 1. So that's, so that's this uh, piece right there. Let's draw a bigger circle. And then I can shift that down again shift it over to, over to there, and that gives me my x3 minus x2. So that's, that's this piece right there. So, so this process of, of taking this, uh, this time series and, and, and applying this, in this case, this is a two-element mask. You'll hear that term. Uh, uh, applying this two-element mask to this time series, this is called convolution. And I can, we, uh, we can also uh, be a little bit
little bit more specific in terms of notation. So you might see we, we have our all of our samples x and uh, and our y is equal to uh, a negative one and followed by a one and our uh, we, we can write this whole operation in one big piece by saying uh, x convolved with y. So, so the mathematicians will use this type of a, uh, of a uh, notation. The, this piece here, of course, does not include the delta t. That's just the, the, the differences. In, in Python, what we were trying to do so let's let's come down. So that, so that's so that's the concept of of convolution in in, in this derivative case. Um, let's talk about how that was implemented in in Python. So uh, so we have our x zero, x one, x two, x three, x four, and on down the line to x n minus one. So that was my my original vector. Uh, if you recall, we so if this was the equal, if this was what x was, if we say x and we index uh, one colon, that means take element one, which is here, down to the end. So it takes takes all of these here. So so what this gives us is a, a vector that looks like this. So this is x one, x two, x three, x four. Uh, Etc. down to x n minus 1. And if you recall, what we did was we subtracted from that a vector that looked like this, uh, colon minus 1. So that, that colon, without anything ahead of it, implicitly there's a 0 there. So we are getting all of the elements uh, from here down to the end, except for except for the very last element. So we're getting all of these. So that, that gives us a vector x0, x1, x2, x3, and on down the line until we get to x n minus 2. Now subtraction of two vectors, what that means is we're, we're lining up uh, the corresponding elements within the vectors. Of course, they have to be the same length. Uh, and, and that's exactly what we, uh, what we have here. So we have x1 minus uh, x0. So that gives us uh, x1 minus x0. And uh, the next one gives us x, x2 minus x1. And uh, the next one gives us x3 minus x2. And the next one gives us x4 minus x3. Okay, and, and the observation, of course, is that uh, what we have, what we have right, right here is the same as what we have right here, except we haven't applied the, the, the divided by delta t yet. So our, so our estimate, our computation then in, uh, in uh, Python looks something along these lines. So we assign this dx variable to x1 colon um, minus x colon minus 1. And we took that and divided by our, our delta t. I guess I, let me write it this way. So, so delta t that that just comes from the f uh, from the fact that we are sampling at 50 hertz, so that that's 20 milliseconds, and and of course that was normalized to to seconds. Okay, so so this is so so this is what we did in code, and let me take one more step here. So the more general step is we could also say. Uh, dx equals uh, uh, y zero times 
x of 1 colon plus y sub 1 times x colon negative 1 and divide by delta t. So here, hopefully, you can guess that uh, uh, y0 is, uh, I've actually swapped I've actually swapped my indices. Let me make those consistent. We put y1 here and y0 here. Um, y1 here is equal to 1, and uh, y0 is equal to uh, negative 1. There's one other little aspect to, uh, to this as far as uh, implementation goes in Python. Uh, the, the, the original vector that we uh, had, this was of length n, and uh, these two vectors here, these are of length uh, n minus 1. So this computation alone gives us a, a length uh, n minus 1. And, and so uh, at the at the very uh, end of this process, uh, you saw a little bit of code where we said dx uh, equals uh, np dot uh, concatenate, or actually we didn't append. The most neutral thing there is, is to just put a zero there. This is, I should say, is equivalent to uh, to us uh, taking our x, which again is x zero, x one, uh, etc., out to x n minus one, and tacking on in one more element here, where uh, where we just copy the value of of uh, x n minus one. So let's go ahead and do that. Oops. So xn minus 1, and then I'm going to add one more onto the x, xn minus 1. And right before that is xn minus 2. So look at what happens when we uh, do the convolution. So these two get combined together to give us xn minus 1 minus xn minus 2, which is what we had before. and so this is um, minus 1 here and 1 here. And then these two are combined together, uh, minus 1 and 1. So we're just shifting over that convolution map. And that gives us xn minus 1 minus xn minus 1. Um, the key is that this is now length uh, n minus 1. And, and once we uh, do this, this computation here, we're left with a vector that is now length of n. And in particular, this value here, it's xn minus 1 minus xn minus 1, that's a value of 0. So that so that's justifies our, our use of this, uh, this append uh, at, at the end of the, the prior process. OK, so, so let's, when we, when we use this convolution, this particular convolution mask, Let's imagine a, a signal. So let's look at x as a function of uh, time here. So time goes in this direction, and, and this is x. If uh, I have a, a signal that does this, the question is, what do the, what do the uh, consecutive uh, samples look like? And what, do, in particular, what do their differences look like? So, so from uh, this sample here to this sample here, we have a, a, a tiny, there's a tiny difference from here to here. Um, but this sample here to this sample here, there's a fairly sizable difference. And this sample here, uh, there's a, a sizable difference. But then it begins to level off. And in particular, by the time we get to this sample minus this sample here, there's essentially no difference. And that is the same across here. And then uh, the difference goes negative. So now we're going from from here to here, and then from from here uh, to this point. Oops, sorry, this point here, 
and then it levels off again. Uh, here, the difference is from here to here, which is not very big. And then by the time we get here, um, we have a very small uh, difference between this. Let me switch over to another color here. Be between this point, this height, and this height right here. So, so if I were to actually draw this out in more continuous uh, form, we're, we're sort of uh, our our uh, x dot. If this is uh, e, if this is zero, x dot is relatively flat to begin with. It uh, it goes it goes up uh, during the the high slope, and then it it's going to level off out over here. So so it actually x dot looks like this, and then we're relatively flat near zero until we we hit this downward slope, and at which time we're actually going uh, through a negative velocity. Um, the magnitude is about uh, what we saw uh, before, and then it levels off again. Okay, so so this is uh, a quick description of uh, a, a derivative filter. If you're coming from the vision domain, this is called a Sobel operator. Of course, we don't have images here. We we have one <coughs> one degree of freedom. Uh, uh, we have time series, so it's just one degree of freedom. In, in the image world, uh, you have two degrees of freedom to work with. <coughs> okay, so, so that's, so that's the, the, the concept there. Um, but, but we do have this, this general uh, opportunity. If I have my signal X, I can imagine taking any mask Y and constructing whatever I would like. Um, so this y doesn't have to be two elements. It can be some k element long. Um, one possibility is uh, that uh, let's say let's set it to uh, to five elements long, and and let's set it to all equal values. And I'm selecting them such that they sum to one. That, that kind of makes uh, makes things a bit cleaner. Um, when we actually convolve this with with x, uh, what the signals people will will call this is a box filter. That's actually a b there. And and when we uh, when we combine it with let's let's write out our x's again here. Three x four x five x six down to xn minus 1. Now I have not two elements that I'm uh, combining together to give me my first element. I have five elements. So I'm, I'm taking uh, from, from here, 3, 4, 5, to here. And these values are all being multiplied by 0.2. So, so this element right here is uh, 0.2x0 plus 0.2x1 plus 0.2x2, uh, 0.2x3, and 0.2x4. The next element over, and it's going to get crowded here, I apologize for that, this next element right here is, is going to get to see Actually, let me go ahead and wipe these out because they're in the way now. It's going to get to see not x0, but it gets to see x1, x2, x3, x4, and now we're bringing in x5. So uh, this next element over is 0.2 x1 plus 0.2 x2, uh, 0.2 x3, etc. Uh, 2 x4 plus 0.2 x5. And and uh, and on down the line. Uh, the ver the last element, if we take this x n minus one, then it's it's going to see uh, x n minus two, x n minus three, out to x n minus four and x n minus five. So it gets to see all of those. So that is our last uh, convolution that we do.
now we said that this this original vector was of length n. This uh, vector is length n minus k plus 1. Or in this particular example, k is equal to 5 uh, to, for the, the five elements of, of y here. So in, in the homework assignment, uh, what, uh, what we advocated was a, as an end of this process of, of convolving some mask, in this case it's going to be a Gaussian filter, we'll talk about that in a second, uh, what we advocated was uh, extending, uh, extending the, the original vector uh, on either side, uh, out over here and out over here by some number, and that number is, um, so let's, I don't know, we'll call it uh, E, and it's going to be K over 2 uh, round down. And if we, if we do that, then, uh, then the, re the, the result of this X, X convolved with, with Y is going to be the same, or I should say it's, uh, sorry about that, the, this modified X convolved with Y will leave us with a, a vector of size N. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so uh, uh, K divided by 2 round down is 2. So I'm going to put an X0 here and an X0 here. And here I'm going to put an Xn minus 1 and an Xn minus 1. And that gives me a, a vector now of length N plus 4. Those are the uh, elements. And then uh, when, when, we, uh, when, when we then perform the convolution, then it's going to be um, n plus 4 minus k plus 1, um, which is equal to n. OK. so. Let's, let's look at what this box filter wants to do to the time series when we convolve it. So I should say that that derivative filter that we were looking at before, it's really looking for high frequencies, really big changes. The box filter actually takes us in the opposite direction. So let's, let's imagine a, a signal not unlike w what we uh, saw before, and then it's going to come back down, um, and just for fun, let's add uh, a little bump right there. So, so our box filter, in order to uh, compute uh, the value for a particular location, so let's say right at this location here, it gets to look at the value at this location and it gets to look at the surrounding two elements. And hopefully it's, it's clear that this, this particular uh, computation is computing an average uh, over these uh, five uh, different points here. So, so we're ending up with, uh, say, uh, 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 2 plus 4, so 6, 7, uh, and then divide by 5. So, uh, so that gives us a value that sits um, right about here. And now let's shift over by 1. So we're going to shift over to this point here. We get to observe here and here, and then this point here and this point here. So we get to see this point this point, this point, this point, and uh, that point. And the sum is, is uh, 3. And divide by 5, so that's pretty relatively small. Um, so uh, we're sitting, we sit about right here. And if we, if we again shift over to the left, you're going to end up with something really close to 0. And by the time we hit here, we're that that average is, is uh, close to zero. So, 
um, if we can plot this continuously, if we imagine this is a continuous function, it's, it's going to do uh, something along these lines here. And then the question is, what happens Uh, what happens when we uh, go off to the right-hand side? So let's look at that. So here's uh, here's purple. So let's look at this piece, this one here. So we're looking at the average of this point and the two surrounding points on either side. So here is zero plus one plus two. That's three plus uh, four. That is seven. And this sample here, uh, that is uh, five plus some change. So 5 plus 7 is 13. 13 divided by 5 is nearly 3. So, so the filtered value at this point is uh, 0, 1, 2, uh, almost 3. So, so the curve is going to extend up to here. And, and the process uh, continues from here. Um, if we uh, let's ask what happens when uh, we're asking what this point is here. So what's the average of the, the, that point and the two surrounding points? It's exactly it, it's exactly this point here. The way we've drawn things. So the so the curve, the filtered curve, actually uh, does something along these lines, and. If you work it out, it's it's also going to come down here, and eventually uh, uh, cut uh, cut across the uh, the downward stroke of the uh, the black curve. And and the question is, what does it do with this little blip that's over here? So the 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 value that's for this point here is the is the uh, surrounding uh, the surrounding five values inclusive. So zero plus zero plus almost zero plus zero plus one and a half divided by five is uh, a very small uh, number. So that's that average sits about right there. If we shift over by one. Now the question is, what is this point here? It is zero plus zero plus zero plus one and a half plus plus two. So that's uh, three and a half divided by five. That's uh, that's still something less than one. So we have that that value there. The next one over. Uh, this point right here is zero plus zero plus one and a half plus two plus zero. So so actually, that point is actually in the exact same location. Whoops. Uh, that that point uh, actually sits right here. If we shift over by one again. So here, this is 0 plus 1 and a half plus 2 plus 0 plus 0, which is actually the same. The, the sum is the same. Uh, and then as we continue off to the right-hand side here, the sum is going to start getting smaller and smaller. So the, <clears throat> so the curve uh, picks up with, with where we left off with the blue, and then it has this really tiny bump before it settles back down to zero. I'm assuming that to the right, we're just sitting at zero. So, so the point of this, of this box filter uh, is that uh, this, this really quick uh, bump here in the signal, we've actually smoothed it out almost entirely. And, and if we make the box filter even bigger, go to from k equals 5 out to k equals 7 or k equals 9, we'll actually even reduce that bump, the size of that bump even more. Um, however, the, the bump on the left-hand side here, this, this feature here, the, the filter is still happy to, uh, to let that signal through. It's not modulating it a lot. It's, it's cutting off a little bit here and here, but it's, but it's not, uh, it's not uh, affecting the peak exactly yet.
Uh, if the box filter were a bit wider, we'd start to cut into that peak as well. So, so this particular convolution mask with all point twos uh, is, is actually inducing a little bit of smoothing. We're removing these sort of spatial high frequency components here, and we're keeping these low frequency components over here. Okay, our, bo our box filter that we were just looking at, uh, our Y had five components, um, which was, uh, uh, which was uh, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, and 0.2. I flipped it on its, on its side. Um, and what, what this means when I'm looking at a signal is that if I am trying, if I'm filtering this, uh, this point here in, in time, then to, to compute the filtered value, I'm, I'm looking at the neighboring plus minus two. So I get this one, this point here, this point, this point, uh, and this point, and this point, and this point right here. And, and I'm giving these uh, equal weight. And, and for some of what we want to be able to do, that, that might be uh, a sufficient level of filtering. But, but in a lot of scenarios, it, it may not make sense for us to, to say that the, the true value of the signal at this point in time here should be uh, equally uh, attributed to uh, all of its neighbors. Actually, I drew in one extra neighbor off to the right-hand side. Sorry about that. So, so the, the idea is um, computing the filtered value for the middle point here. Certainly the, the, two, the two neighbors are relatively important, uh, but, the, but the neighbors further out, should they have equal weight or should they have somewhat less weight? And, and the other way to come down on this is, is that they really should have some sort of a, uh, a lesser weight. And, and so that's, that's the point of, our, of, of doing our Gaussian filter. So we might uh, set Y here instead. Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm going to just make up numbers here on the fly. So let's say a 0.5 in the middle, uh, a 0.3 here, a 0.3 here. So that, oh, sorry, I'm going a little bit too far there. Um, let's say point. Uh, Four in the middle, and point three around that. That's still too high. This is what I get for making this up on the fly here. Um, let's let's set the middle point to uh, point three, and the two surrounding points to to point two. I'm I'm trying to make these sum up to one. Uh, so that's uh, four seven. Uh, Actually, that's still not quite where I want them. So let's let's do this. Um, so so what I'm saying here is that the center point has a weight of 0.4. The two neighboring ones have half the weight, and what that's uh, leaving me with is a total of 0.2 remaining. And so I'm going to put a 0.1 and a 0.1 over here. Uh, the the coefficients don't have to add up to one, and they often do not. Uh, but it certainly makes the interpretation a lot easier. So if I were to if I were to plot this out, uh, the point if this is zero here, um, uh, the middle point here is two, three, four, uh, and the two surrounding points are here and here. Oops, wrong place, right there, and the next uh, surrounding are right here and uh, right here. Uh, and and so if I were to uh, fill this in with a continuous function, then I can kind of justify uh, this type of a shape, which on the fly is not quite a Gaussian, but, but it's a, a reasonable approximation. So, uh, so the procedure in applying this, uh, this uh, filter where we have five different elements is the same. So, uh, so we have our, our x vector here. We're going to uh, extend it uh, to give us some sort of an uh, an x an x prime. Um, so this is this x is of length n. This is of length n plus four, since k is equal to five. And and the way and the particular algorithm that we're asking you to do uh, is to extend 
by adding two elements on, on either side that are equal to the first element and to the last element, respectively. Um, then, then we uh, involve with y, uh, and that gives us and, and that gives us a uh, a, uh, a a new vector. Uh, we'll we'll call this uh, we'll call this vector z. And this z here, uh, after this procedure is over, is of length n as well. Now, now notice uh, in this process we haven't done anything about dividing by delta t. We're not actually computing derivatives here, so, so we don't, it, it doesn't make sense to uh, divide by uh, delta t. Uh, that was, uh, using that was more about making sure that we were, we still ended up with values that had meaningful units. So in that case, that was meters per second. So, so how do we implement this in, in Python code? So this this first step, uh, I can uh, I can uh, go through a prepending pre operation. Uh, so I could construct a an, a new vector that is x zero comma uh, x zero, and I could uh, append that to x. So so this is the uh, this is actually a concatenate uh, operator. I'm going to uh, concatenate it with x, and uh, this is x uh, uh, this is x uh, sorry about that. Um, this is the last element of uh, of x, uh, so we're going to call it, sorry, it's late, um, so this is x minus 1, and x minus 1, Oops. okay, so, so I've created uh, three, we've got three different NumPy arrays here if I've done things right. Uh, and uh, and I can do an np.concat. And I, I don't have the syn syntax quite right there. I, I will get that out to you. Uh, but that, that's the essence of what we're doing. So that's going to give us our, our x prime. Uh, and then we can go about uh, uh, constructing, let's say, x prime, and, and the very first element is uh, from 0 to uh, not uh, negative 1, but uh, to uh, negative 4. Sorry, this is negative five. So, th so this uh, this thing here in Python code is going to give me uh, elements in x prime of uh, zero to uh, to uh, n plus four minus five. So we're, we're cutting out five uh, elements from x prime there. And that's multiplied by uh, y0. And there's a product operator there. So y1, x prime of, and now we're going from 1 to minus 4, plus y and that's multiplied by x prime uh, 2 to minus 3. And 
then we have two other uh, elements here, y uh, sub 3 x prime uh, colon minus 2. I'm sorry, I, I'm missing the beginning. So this is This is element 3 to minus 2. I think I actually might be off by 1. I apologize for that. So let's finish writing this out. y sub 4 uh, multiplied by x prime uh, 4 to... We really want to go 4 to the end, so I am off by 1. So let me fix that. Minus 5. So minus 4, minus 3, minus 2 minus 1. Okay. And 4 to the end. Uh, okay, so so uh, a couple of points about uh, the notation here. So this is what z is equal to. Um, so first off, the, the prime of x prime. This is not an operator. I'm, uh, the, I'm using x prime to mean a modified version of x that has four extra elements to it. Uh, and my convolution mask is expressed in terms of uh, in terms of y, whereas in the homework assignment uh, it's expressed in terms of uh, w. But that uh, but that still it still works out the same. Okay, so I'll go ahead and get this released, uh, and I will post one more bit uh, to get this concatenate uh, notation correct.